Stan Jubilisco here, a viewer of this channel and a reader of my book Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition, has requested that I do some videos outlining the function of individual components in some of the circuits in chapter 26. This happens to be figure 26-12 which is a tuned radio frequency power amplifier circuit uh, for, at, for output at modest levels of power, a few watts, say 30 watts, 40 watts. So this is an NPN bipolar power transistor. If it were PNP, you just reverse the polarity of the power supply and uh, you get the same result. Because there is a resistor right here, 47 ohms, between ground and the base, and no other biasing of the base, this is almost certainly a class B, that's class Bravo, amplifier circuit. Component values, by the way, uh, for capacitors are in microfarads if less than one. That's this one right here and uh, in picofarads if more than one that's those two variable capacitors here 200 picofarads representing the maximum value of each variable capacitor inductances are in micro henry's 2.5 2.5 and 50. so the signal at a low level probably uh, possibly from an oscillator or a low, very low level amplifier at approximately 10 megahertz comes into the input. The capacitor here blocks any effect that this resistor might have on the uh, output of the circuit leading to the input of this amplifier. That is to say, it, it keeps uh, the, the uh, bias the way it should be for this stage yet it passes the radio frequency signal because it's of a sufficiently large value, 0.01 microfarads. Puts the signal on the base of the transistor, which is biased for class B, meaning that when, the, when we have the positive half of the cycle, we get conduction through the transistor from the emitter to the collector. That's electron flow from the emitter to the collector. And when we have a negative uh, half of the cycle at the base, it's cut off. The transistor is cut off and we do not get any signal at all. So it, what we really have is rectification as well as amplification, provided that we uh, choose this bias value correctly. Uh, and I've had a, put a 47 ohm resistor here because presumably the output impedance of the previous stage is around 50 ohms. Now, assuming that we have a, a, the proper choice of power transistor, and it has to be a power transistor because as you can see it's going to have to draw an awful lot of current. There's no resistor between the positive 12 volt supply and ground. The radio frequency choke keeps the signal away from the power supply where it would likely be shunted to ground by the filter capacitors and the power supply and you'd be out of luck. You wouldn't get any signal at all. So you have an amplified and rectified signal at the collector of the transistor right here. I hope I didn't say drain. I, I, I often get field effect and bipolar transistors uh, electrodes confused. Now these two variable capacitors act independently. This one along with the 2.5 uh, microhenry inductor which has an air core by the way as you can see by the absence of the lines. Dashed lines indicate powdered iron. This is probably a toroidal powdered iron core radio frequency choke keeps the RF away from the power supply. These two inductors conspire together with these two capacitors to optimize 
the output uh, so that it has the highest possible amount of power. And the way that you should adjust this circuit is to keep adjusting these two capacitor uh, yes these two variable capacitors right here in the vicinity of 10 megahertz which is the happens to be the design frequency given these component values right here you should adjust these independently at a low power level in order to get the highest possible amount of output power that you can and then you can increase the drive to whatever level is sufficient to provide 30 to 50 watts or thereabouts of output uh, power here. This is designed for 50 ohms so you might connect this to an antenna and uh, but the impedance of this output here will affect the adjustment of this loading capacitor right here and to some extent also the adjustment position of the tuning capacitor right here. In any case, you should have a watt meter connected to the output and peak the output of that watt meter into a dummy load for 50 ohms preferably and then connect a 50 ohm antenna or a transmatch that will provide a 50 ohm non-reactive load right here. Then you're good to go. Tuning capacitor loading capacitor and these two inductors provide for the resonance necessary to cause the resonant frequency of the amplifier to be optimized here and the matching to be optimized to 50 ohms for the output here. RF choke keeps the signal away from the power supply blocking capacitor lets the signal through but keeps DC away from the input circuit whatever that might happen to be. If you want more power yet, uh, say a 1500 watts maximum legal limit uh, peak envelope power, you're going to need a linear amplifier which typically is designed for a 50 ohm impedance, at least in amateur radio work it is, and that's what I do, call sign W1, GV, Whiskey 1, Good Vibrations. I don't use uh, amplifiers at the output. I am a low power QRP, Quebec Romeo Papa person, or quasi QRP. I like to run about 10 watts normally. So that, I hope, will clarify the function of each one of these components with the caveat that this be the proper type of transistor for the application. A power transistor of the correct design to function well at about 10 megahertz. Happy DXing if you're a ham radio operator with 20 or 30 watts. It certainly can be done. Stan Jibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.